Let's stay with the markets now and bring in John Lynch, CIO at Comerica Wealth Management. John, good to have you here. I know you just heard that segment there with Jared, and we started off talking about margin pressures at NVIDIA. We're seeing it across the board of a lot of companies out with earnings right now. Do you think that these companies are going to see any margin relief in the second half of the year? Good afternoon, Alexis. Delighted to be back on. Yes, I think margins are the big story for the for the quarter. Um, quite frankly, I'm not convinced how many investors are really concerned about the fourth quarter. I think they're all forward looking at this point, right? They want to know about, to your question, the second half of the year. And while some of the longer duration stocks that you just mentioned, uh, long duration, lower margin or declining margin type stocks, high valuation may struggle, we do think cyclicality will lead in some of the margins. Uh, for example, in the S&P 500, we're looking for at least 12% margins to sustain through 2022. So we may have some uh, you know, variability between margins within, even within sectors. But we think overall as a whole for the index, margin should be sustained in that 12% range. Of course, the main event in March, at least, is going to be the Federal Reserve meeting. And yesterday we got those Fed minutes from their last meeting. We didn't seem to get a lot of clarity, though, John, in terms of, you know, what policy makers are thinking in terms of a 50 basis point hike versus a quarter basis point hike in, in March. What would you like to see happen? What do you think is the right thing for the Fed to do if they're listening and you want to give them some advice? Absolutely. I'd love to. <laughs> uh, the new March madness will be the Fed. You're absolutely right. And uh, I think that 50 basis points is appropriate in March. You know, the Fed uh, wants to reestablish their inflation fighting credentials. Uh, I think that's going to be difficult for them to do with 9% wholesale prices, 7% consumer prices, yet they're still buying $20 billion a month in treasuries over the next four weeks. So we have to be very mindful of that. So I think it will be very important for the Fed to really show the global markets that they're serious about this, do 50 basis points this time quarter basis point, the ensuing three meetings. And we'll, at that point, I think we'll get a good assessment on really the year over year base effect changes and we'll get a handle on supply chains. And uh, I'm still not convinced we're gonna see a lengthy, a lengthy, call it three year tightening cycle. Uh, it could be done at one and a half, two percent 2% on the short end of the curve. What do you think, I mean, when they finally start to run off the balance sheet, what will the impact be on yields? Because we've seen um, the 10-year yield uh, pull back a, a little bit from 2%. There are some who are calling for that yield to hit 3% later this year. And we all know that in, in the past, when we see that flattening yield curve, it sometimes portends a recession on the horizon. So what are your thoughts in terms of the yield curve? And, and are you worried at all uh, about a recession? Is that part of the conversation for you? Well, absolutely. I get paid to worry, so I, I look at it all the time. But when I look at the yield curve currently, as I mentioned earlier, the Fed is still buying $20 billion in treasuries over the next month. OK, it's really it's it's an out of body experience thinking about, again, 9 percent wholesale prices, 7 percent uh, consumer prices, and they're still buying. But that's the plan they set out. Uh, I do think that the yield curve right now, uh, the long end is under pressure because of geopolitical tensions. I think to some extent we had the Omicron scare uh, over the holidays uh, into January. As the Fed begins to unwind the balance sheet, say we do 50 basis points and a two or three quarter basis points thereafter at ensuing meetings, as they start to unwind the balance sheet, call it by mid year, say they do 50 billion a month, uh, you suddenly are at 300 billion less on the, uh, on the Fed balance sheet. By year end, it's still an $8 trillion balance sheet at that point, but nonetheless, you don't have an $8 trillion balance sheet supporting uh, the long end of the curve. So I think this flattening is just unique factors relative to Omicron, geopolitical tensions with Russia, and the fact that the Fed is still buying. Once the Fed starts raising and once the Fed starts uh, allowing, call it $300 billion off the balance sheet by year end, I think the yield curve will steepen, and I think that steepening of the yield curve will be more reflective of the global cyclical recovery. So what I'm hearing here, John, is that you're you're pretty bullish on, on the market. Um, and so where do you expect us to end the year? Do you have a projection for the S&P sure. 500? Well, for the next three or four weeks, we're standing at the precipice, right, looking down. Uh, but I do think once the Fed gets started, uh, at that point, we can have a, you know, the global cyclical recovery. I think that will be supportive of Again, I talked about 12% margins. I think that's consistent with call it 8 to 10% profit growth for the S&P 500. 
And I think we're fairly valued at 5,000 on the S&P 500 by year end. So call it you know, a market that would move in line with earnings and income. I'm not looking at PE multiple expansion, but still uh, you know, that eight to 10% range on a total return. And which uh, sectors of the market do you think are gonna get us there, John? Thank you. We're still looking cyclically. Uh, we believe that uh, shorter duration value type stocks, those companies with nearer term earnings and a rising rate environment, rising inflationary environment, uh, you're going to see less demand for some of those uh, longer duration names, some of those growth names that led for so long. And uh, we've seen you know, value firming. We've seen cyclicality firming. Uh, we've seen profitable small caps uh, uh, firming. So within the sector space specifically, Still like the, moment, the, the momentum behind uh, the energy space. I think financials will run commensurate with the yield curve and with higher interest rates. Uh, industrials have been a bit disappointing, but I still think as the dollar backs off a little bit, once we get hopefully clarity on the geopolitical tensions, I think industrials will uh, start to take off again with the global cyclic recovery. And the fourth sector that we like is materials, and they've been pretty much running commensurate uh, with uh, uh, the energy sector as the, as the market and commodities as the market is pricing in, you know, renewed global demand. For sure, that they have. All right, John Lynch, Comerica Wealth Management CIO. Thanks for your insights on the market today. We appreciate it.